my guest has seen thousands of young children experience the tangible presence of God and operate children now in the gifts of the Spirit. She says, if a child can do this, so can you and your children. Next. I, I don't know how she did this. Amy, you're raised Baptist. Your grandfather is the Baptist minister. You love him dearly. Uh, he's not too receptive to speaking, you know, supernatural languages, tongues, being baptized in the Holy Spirit. How did this happen to you at 18? It, well, it started when I was in college, and the pastors in the area, in the city in Reading where I went to college, just got back from the Toronto blessing, and they started having night services. And one of the pastors, his son, was in school with me, and he invited a bunch of us to go to the service. So as we were in that service, they're taping these lines up and asking people to stand on these lines and putting their hands out to receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I had never seen anything like this <laughs> ever <sure>. in my <laughs> life. As I stood there and people were falling down in the presence of God, they were laughing, they were crying, they were rolling ar around, they're having encounters with the Lord. I slipped away to the back of the room and it I... It probably scared you. That's what it did. I started crying, not because I was moved by God, but because I was afraid of what was happening. So that's when I called my grandfather. And he's the patriarch of the family. When we have any questions, he's the one that we go to for counsel as well. So I called him and I said, Grandpa, what, what is this? And he said, that's the devil. And it actually did not feel right to me when he said it. So I respectfully let him tell me what he thought. This was really hard to not agree with my grandfather. I had to turn to the Lord and say, God, I do not believe this is the devil. The reason I did not believe it was the devil was because people were operating in the gifts of the Spirit. They were, their lives were being changed. They were being filled with joy freedom. There was a revival happening among our students, and I knew at that moment, that can't be the devil. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. This has to be God. And in that moment, that is when the Lord started to reveal His Holy Spirit to me. I started having dreams and visions. One night, as we were preparing for a church service, um, before the service was starting, we just walk around the room and pray and ask God, okay, Lord, what are you doing? We invite your presence, we invite your spirit. And I had this open vision, almost like a conveyor belt, where children of all sizes, all shades of color, all ethnic backgrounds were coming past me, like flooding, thousands of children coming past my eyes. And the Lord said, this is what I've called you to. I've called you to the generation of children. And to me, it wasn't a generation of from this age to this age. It was a legacy, a legacy to transform how the way we connect to children, relate to children, and teach children. I went to school. I didn't know what to, to do, so I decided to become a Christian education major. So thought, now, without even knowing, you were preparing the right way. I was. My dad just wanted me to go to college and get married. That's all. Oh, I speaking did. about getting married. Yes. For three months, you started having a reoccurring dream. Tell me about that. Yes. So there was a season of my life where um, I was in a an apartment, a small apartment, and I had a single bed and I was laying in my bed and I would wake up every morning finding myself smashed up against the side of the bed to the wall. And I remember every night I was trying to make space for the Lord, for Him to lay there. I was creating space for Him. And in those in that moment, for three months, every night, I had the exact same dream. And the dream was, um, we first started in this couple's home, and it was like a Bible study, and there was somebody playing the guitar. But I couldn't see their face. 
And then it transitions to we're standing in a kitchen and we're talking to a bunch of people that I recognize, but they don't naturally all come together in a group setting. So I didn't know how this worked. And then later I was having a discussion in their backyard and I was talking to this man. I didn't see his face, but we were having like detailed conversation. And this would happen for three months, night after night after night. And so when I was journaling with the Lord and asking him what this was, he said, this is your husband. Hmm. And um, six months later, my husband now and I started dating. And he told me, we had been friends for four years. He told me that he was gonna ask me to marry him in six months and I better be ready to answer. And I said, I can't because the Lord showed me in a vision of whom I'm gonna marry, so we have to see. Well, a few, like a month later, everything in the dream started happening. This couple moved into town, this older couple, they opened their house. When I walked into their house, their living room was the living room in my dream. When we went into the kitchen, the kitchen was their kitchen. The people in that kitchen were the people in my dream. And my husband wow. put his arm around me, he was leading worship, and then later we were having a discussion in the backyard. So look at look it. God shows her her future, shows her with his reoccurring dreams, her husband. They get married, have family, and her two-year-old is a very unusual two-year-old. Something started happening supernaturally with her. That's right. She and I were in her room, and we had just bought this house. We were in a new neighborhood. We, did, we weren't familiar with things, and we were unpacking, putting things away. My husband was away on a camp with some junior hires, a spiritual emphasis camp, where they go and they encounter the Lord. So as we're getting ready, she looks at me. My back is to the, the door of the bedroom, and she said, Mommy, who's that man standing behind you? To be honest, my first thought was terror. I thought somebody came into our home. Somebody was invading of our course. home. And as I turned around to my relief, nobody was there. And I said, nobody's there. And she said, mommy, that man right behind you. Again, I turn around. And as I'm turning my head, I really feel it was a word of the Lord that said, ask her about this man. What does this man look like? Who is he? So I turned around and I said, is that man still there? And she said, yes. And I said, is he good or is he bad? She said, he's good, mommy. And I said, oh, is that an angel? And she said, no, mommy. I said, no? She goes, no, it's Jesus. Wow, that is <laughs> something. Not Jesus. How would you like your children to give you a report like that? <laughs> It was amazing. And she would see angels, she would see Jesus, and then probably about several months later, she started seeing scary demonic things. You, you know, I was wondering about that. What does a parent do when you have a child that can see in the invisible world and sees evil things? What did you do? Well, we actually were besides ourselves. We we never experienced anything like this before, so we definitely had to figure out what to do quickly. So I actually knew of a, a girl that worked with me, and I asked her. I had heard that she had seen things in the in the spiritual realm, so I asked her, "What do I do with my daughter?" And she had told me the first thing to do is believe her, listen to her, and believe her. Create a safe space for her to tell you what she's experiencing. And so at that moment, we went back to my daughter and I pulled in the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, what do we do? So we, we started teaching her that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. And so when she encountered these scary things, we said, your voice and authority gets to tell those demons where to go. And so we say, go away in Jesus' name, and they have to flee, they have to leave, they have to listen to you, because God has given you more authority over the angels and the demons. Did she see that in her life, that authority? She, it was scary. Could you imagine being, yeah. like, angels come to people in the, in the Bible, and the first thing angels say is, do not be afraid, <laughs> because our natural reaction is, 
what is this? So she, of course, was operating in a lot of fear. Well, the Lord gave her her helper, her, her sister who was 18 months younger than her, and told her, I'll tell them to go away. So every time she was afraid, her sister was there to stand next to her until she actually saw wow. that it worked. Imagine seeing that kind of authority at that age. I didn't even know there was an invisible world at that age. Uh, Amy, so life progresses. You're teaching the children that God told you you were going to be doing. And tell me about the glory that invaded your four-year-old's classroom. Yes. So this was an evening service at Bethel, and usually those services can go for four to five hours. You know, the, we're, we're pressing in for the presence, for God to encounter the adults. And I always tell my, my, my team, we are not a second class citizen. We actually get the same authority. We get to actually experience this, the same thing that the adults experience but we get to do it with kids. So it's going to be faster. It's going to be easier. And so um, the night was going on, the teachers had taught their class and they got to a point where they were like, should we put a video in? Should we just put a, a video in just for the kids because it's late? And one of the teachers said, no, nope, because she remembered my words, not on my watch. We will not put a movie in for kids. And so she said, let's just walk around the room and just start praying. And they started walking around, the teachers started walking around the room with the kids there, just coloring and playing. And they started speaking in tongues, asking the Lord, what do we do? And the teacher realized, oh my word, these kids probably have no idea what we're doing. They have no idea that our language right now, our prayer language is from God. So they use that moment to say, do you know what's happening right now? Do you know what, what language we're speaking? It's a language that God has given us each individually. So they taught that and the presence of God, the spirit of God fell on these kids and they started speaking in their own prayer language. They were rolling around on the ground. They were, they were crying, they were laughing, they were filled with the spirit. And parents were starting to come to the door just to watch, watch these children encounter the Lord and they themselves started to get touched. Oh, I'm getting touched just as you share that. I'm sure you are too. When we return, Amy will pray for you and your children to encounter God. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Call now and get Amy Gagno's must-read book, Raising Powerful Children, and Eugene Lunning's fully illustrated Moments with Jesus Encounter Bible for your children or grandchildren. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9793. You will receive Amy Gagno's must-read book, Raising Powerful Children. Through this book, you will be training your children to walk in the supernatural power of God. Discover how to empower your kids to develop their own powerful prayer lives. Train your children and grandchildren in the prophetic. Equip your kids to minister supernatural healing. Create space for your children to encounter God. Develop your child's love for the Bible. Teach your kids to decree and declare truth over their circumstances. You will also receive Eugene Lunning's fully illustrated Moments with Jesus Encounter Bible for your children or grandchildren. The Moments with Jesus Encounter Bible was designed to help your children encounter Jesus for themselves. Put your kids in the middle of the action of 20 essential stories from the four Gospels. The Moments with Jesus Encounter Bible introduces your kids to the living Jesus who knows and loves them, illustrates Jesus' nature and character as revealed in Scripture, cultivates a personal connection with your children and Jesus Himself, presented in a simple, beautiful format. The Moments with Jesus Encounter Bible will help you shepherd your kids into a thriving, dynamic relationship with Jesus. There are 20 stories about the four Gospels that bring your children into the actual moments that are happening in the stories, as if they're living in that moment with Jesus. They're hearing His words. It's an engagement opportunity for them to actually feel, experience, and encounter the Lord through Scripture. Don't miss out on getting Amy Gagno's must-read book, Raising Powerful Children, and Eugene Lunning's fully illustrated Moments with Jesus Encounter Bible for your 
children or grandchildren. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9793. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9793 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Amy, how important is it to speak the words of God over your children? I mean, it sounds good, but how important is that? Mm. It is very important. <laughs> this is where your children get their identity. This is where they get to hear who they are and what you're speaking over them and declaring over them is what God has written about us, that they are powerful, that they have purpose, they have a destiny, that they have a life to live, fully free with the Spirit of God. So this is an amazing opportunity to raise powerful children. So Amy, how do you teach children to pray for the sick? It's simple. Their prayers do not need to be elaborate. They do not need to be um, scripted. These prayers are simple. They just need to know that our God is who He says He is, and He's going to do what He says He's going to do. And they partner their faith with that. I want you to talk to parents who have said, I'm turning my children's spiritual education over to my local church. And that's their job, not my job. Mm. Tell them. Yep, there is a thing called the law of first mention. And this means that what your, your children hear for the very first time, they will establish as foundation for truth. So if you as a parent get to establish this with your children, this is the place where you should be stewarding that. You should be stewarding truth, identity. The church should be the reinforcement. The church is, is the cherry on the top, but home is where your children would know who they are. God chose you, parents, to be their parent, whether they are your biological child or whether you adopted them or whether you inherited them. God chose you. You were called to be the one that speaks identity and truth and knowledge and wisdom and tell them about who Jesus is. Well, you did a good job on your children yeah. because your daughter, now tell me about the time your daughter prayed for a man at church with a serious heart condition. Yes, that we have four girls, and this is our third daughter. We were walking around church before it was starting, and we were talking to uh, couples around, just introducing ourselves or catching up with people. And this one couple in particular, we always stop by and catch up. And the, the husband stopped me, and I was with my girls. It was me and my girls. And my, this husband stopped and said, I need, I need you to pray. We just got a report that I have a serious heart condition and I'm having a life-threatening surgery to fix it. And I believe God will heal me but I just need others to partner with me, to believe with me. So we circled around him and we started to pray. And my, the youngest at the time, my third daughter, she prayed, Jesus, I just pray you heal his heart, amen. And so we just got a report um, several weeks later from the man that later that week he went to his doctor, his cardiologist and said, I, went, I want you to do another test before the surgery. I want you to go back and I want you to test because I believe something is different, something has changed. So they did another um, test and he has two results. One with a serious damaged heart and the other with a perfect heart. And the doctor said, I do not know what happened. These are not the same hearts. And the man said, I know. So he came to us and he told us this was the report that he just received from his doctor. He has a clean bill of health. And he said, and I want you to know that when your daughter prayed, I felt something inside of me happen. I felt the power and the authority when she prayed. Your daughter. 
Yes. Your child, when they have that experiential knowledge, they will never forget it. Never. Never. And you need that experiential knowledge. And those others that are watching, you need this experiential knowledge. Think for yourself. I want you to say this prayer and believe it to the best of your ability, because this is the beginning of your pathway, whether you're young or my age, to have your own encounter with God that no one, no one can ever take from you. Please repeat this prayer out loud and mean it to the best of your ability. Dear God, I've made many mistakes for which I'm truly sorry. I believe your blood washes me clean to the point that, God, you remember my mistakes no more. New beginning, fresh start, clean. Now that I'm clean because of you, Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior and my Lord. I want to have an encounter like a little child, like the little children that Amy teaches. I'm willing to follow you, but I need to know you. I need to experience you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amy, pray whatever God shows you for the young children watching mm -hmm. and the children my age watching mm -hmm. to experience God. Yes. Before I do, I just want to just say there are several of you watching right now, and you feel that it's been too late. I've already raised my children. It's too late to start. Or I want my child, but I am barren. I want you to know God is doing something right now. He is shifting things right now. The past is not what he sees. He sees the future, he sees the hope, and he sees the promise. So I want to encourage you that there is never time with God. He's timeless. He works within a time that we cannot comprehend. And I just want to pray right now for every child, every person. Lord, I just ask right now, I just see you crashing in homes and you're, you're releasing your presence, you're releasing your spirit, you're opening children's hearts and adults' hearts to experience the new levels and depths of who you are. It's like a revival is happening. You're breaking open hearts right now. You're crashing in and you're transforming minds. You're making things new. There is a life. There is joy. The joy of the Lord will be your strength now. There's a transfer. The things that you've carried that are heavy, the burdens that have been hard, God is transferring it right now and he's exchanging it for joy, for love, and of peace. And right now, I just pray as your children are playing, running around, doing homework, getting ready for bed, or getting ready in the morning, that God is encountering them right now, that they actually are experiencing the presence of God. They're hearing His voice, and they're hearing Him move, and there are angelic angels being released. They're ushering in the presence of God right now into your homes. Your homes will be beacons of light for the world to see. Your children are going to change this world. We just pray this in Jesus' name, amen.